Hey guys, this is Mr. M. We're going to talk about calculating molar mass today. Uh, first thing you're going to need is a periodic table. And with the periodic table, just remember uh, we are looking for uh, the ability to calculate molar mass. And the molar mass can be found at the bottom of each of the tiles on the periodic table. So we're looking at titanium here. Uh, the mass of one atom of titanium is 47.87 AMUs, or atomic mass units. But the mass of one mole of titanium atoms, that would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of those atoms, is 47.87, but now it's in grams. So that's one of the key things to remember when you're, when you're doing this stuff. When we're talking a mole, it's in grams. Okay, so moles equal grams. When we're talking a single atom, those masses are in AMUs. Okay, so that's a key thing to remember. One mole of boron, which is number five on the periodic table, has a mass of 10.18 grams per mole. Okay, for that. And so that's how we're, we're figuring this out. So let's say that we have, uh, you know, um, a compound of, oh, let's say aluminum nitride. So that's going to be ALN. That's its formula. So that would be 26.98 grams of aluminum and 14.01 grams of nitrogen and to get the molar mass of the whole thing you just add it together okay so we're going to look at uh at an example here right now we have calcium hydroxide which has the formula ca and then parentheses oh2 and you'll notice I just brought up the elements that are in the formula and their spots on the, on the periodic table. So what the formula is telling me is a couple of things. Um, one, there is one calcium in this guy. Okay. This number is telling me there's two of everything in there, which means we have two oxygens and two hydrogens in that formula. So anything that's parenthesized, whatever subscript is found after that, multiply it by that. It's just like math. It's a distributive property. So uh, calcium, if I look up its mass, is 40.08. So I'm going to put that down. And we usually round it to the nearest tenth in chemistry. So we'll go 40.1. Oxygen is 16, but remember there's two of them. So that's 2 times 16 which is going to be 32. And remember, we're talking grams per mole here, so we'll be using grams, okay? Um, when you look at hydrogen, it's 1.01. .01. We'll just round that to one, but again, there's two of them. So it's two times one. That's going to give me a two there. And again, that's two grams per mole. So these numbers, when we're talking atoms, one atom, the unit is AMU, the atomic mass unit, but one mole of them, which is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of them, that number magically becomes grams. That's the beauty of Avogadro's number, the mole. We can take those AMUs, make them grams. Why do we want to use grams? Because we do labs and we have electronic balances that measure in grams, not AMUs. So let's go back to this one. Let's add everything up. And we have 1.1, we have 4, and we have 74.1 grams. Uh, so for every one mole of calcium hydroxide, CaOH2, it's going to weigh 74.1 grams. If I have 74.1 grams of calcium hydroxide, that means I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of it. What I mean by that is we have, this is ionic. Remember, ionic compounds form crystal structures, metal with non-metals. Okay, 
So the smallest piece of that crystal structure is known as a formula unit. Okay, for covalent molecules, remember that's all nonmetals, their smallest unit is the molecule. Okay, that clump of atoms. Remember the Latin molescula, which means a little lump. So covalent molecules, ionic, it's a formula unit. So there would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd CaOH2s in 74.1 grams. Okay, so the molar mass is a very important calculation that you need to be able to make. This is how you do it. Here's a good example of it.